Hello, Tsarayim Tovim. I want to make a answer a little bit. It's an open letter to Nachal Chaim, he calls himself. He wrote a few comments about my uh, about what I put up on YouTube. Um, but before we do this, I just want to add one thing on that I left off. In the last letter I made to Rabbi Halberstam, he wants to claim the Choymet is a snail. And uh, like Rashi says, unlike anybody else, and I saw in the Living Chumash by Avari Kaplan, who is known to me, check out everything, Bidiukim and uh, Diukim Yaserot, that he also does not hold this way. The, the Choymet is not a snail, rather a chameleon. Okay, the first comment here by Nachla Chaim is against Rav Reisman, as the previous one was. And how can Rav Reisman compare to all these great gedolim? Rav Yisrael Belsky, Rav Zalman Nechemia Goldberg, who I know, I personally met him, and we talked, he asked me about, I uh, know about astrology, he wanted to know about it, we, we had an interesting talk. Rav Heschel Schachter, who perhaps I'll be, I'll expound on a bit. I, we put up, I just by on a completely different subject, I put up uh, a machlokas between the Satmar Rebbe and his Rebbe, Rav Yosef Dovber Soloveitchik, about uh, if you're allowed to make a Medina, just, uh, just maybe, uh, I don't want to get too on the, off the subject, but are you allowed to make a Medina, one Jew will be killed. The Satmar Rebbe, and of course the Briskerol was known for this, say no. And apparently Rav Soloveitchik, was very shook up by this, and he came up with a tshuva, why you're allowed to make a Medina and sacrifice Jewish life. And I saw in an interview, I believe it was in Mishpacha magazine, somewhere I saw, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, he said, Rav Shechter said, that's, Rav Heschel Shechter said, that's the price of making the Medina, 8,000 lives. That's the price, okay, that's what he holds, and it's based on Rav Soloveitchik. And I recommend, I put it up only about a week ago, the Machlokas, it's about an eight-minute eight clip between, uh, explained by Rav Yermiyahu Koyin, eight-minute clip explaining the Machlokas, how he is argues he, on the Satmar Rebbe, Rav Yosef Dov Soloveitchik. Also Rav Meir Mazuz and Rav Yisrael Toplin, who I never heard of, I looked him up, he seems to be known for his work on the international date line. Rav Maz ah, so I want to say one thing in common between all these people, all these fine rabbis, they don't go into the sugya uh, the one, a little exception I'll go into a second. They don't go into the Suya. What is, who is, the the dog Achilles on, the dog for it Uh I didn't see it all. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't see it all. And Rev Goldberg, Rev Schechter. Rev Schechter works a lot on, on how it's tying. Uh... And uh, Rabelsky, I didn't see anything where he goes into any pilpul, any discussion of who the, what is the Techelis. Now, Rav Mir Mazuz does a little bit. He, what I saw, I have one article by him that I saved. It came out in his weekly sheet that he comes out, a very interesting drushes. Uh, that he makes every Mozi Shabbos, and there's a, a alone that comes out, and it's one of the few alones I glance at. I'm a big campaigner against alonim because people learn them in Chazva Shashats, which is a Hill Hashem, and perhaps we'll talk about that, but not today, not on this clip here. So he goes into one of the things they say is the anti Techelis people, the one the anti Murex people is that all these mounds of shells they found were for making argamon. Now, he wants to say this can't be because the dye that comes out is red. Or the dye we need is red, I don't quite understand. So, uh, I put up my email here, if somebody wants it, I can send it to them. Uh, if we can find him to make to do the kits there. So he, but he doesn't really go into all the proofs. Now, now. Uh, what, what are the proofs for it now? The basic 
text on Techelis before even Rab Bornstein. Right? This is Rab Bornstein is Techelis, what do you call it, 102, but Techelis 101 is a book by, here I have it here, I even printed it quite a few years ago, by Arab Noach David Isaacovich in Koivitz, Guinness Radim. It's a Sotmer journal, it's published in Williamsburg. And they come out every three, four seasons a year, and maybe they've made only 15 issues. That could be they're not doing less now. And they published a tremendous mimer. Now, in this mimer, and by the way, the picture on this YouTube is the last page where he sums up everything. Now, he found 21 simonim of the Chilazal that are found in Chazal. 21 Simonim, count them there. It starts with Gufo Domeliam. And Ayan Sham, you can see it. And by the way, it's available at the, in uh, Dr. Strooms. I believe that's his name, Dr. Stroom. I spoke to him a few times. Uh, org. It's easy to find, and you can find it there. This is a 31 page Kuntras, maybe. And uh, he came out with a longer one, which is maybe about 60 pages, which I, Dr. Stroom, I sent it to him. He said he's going to put it up, and maybe you'll find the longer one there. And I understood from somewhere that these are all from Chazal, these 21 Simonim, and he's got other ones from Rishonim and maybe Achron. I don't know. I didn't see the countries. Perhaps I have to call them up again. I called up the, the people, the editor of the journal. I found who he is. I called him up. And, uh, so, okay, one sec. Uh, so these people, they don't work on what is Tehillah. Now, the people who do work on it is Rav Reisman. He comes up with Iker Eight Simanim. And, uh, and uh, two of them he calls Tiyuftas. One of them was Sida, which came Rabbi... Halberstam from Lakewood to trying to show that it's a big mistake. And like I said in the last one, that uh, call him up, he's a neighbor of yours. I'm here in Jerusalem, but he's in Lakewood and Rabbi Reisman, it could be he was in Jerusalem last week also. I heard uh, a friend of mine was uh, very, very close to him, but he's good. Let me show me. Okay, so I'm going to leave it at this. Now, one more thing I want to say here. That there are some very honest, fine people that write on Tachelis, and that I've spoken to and I know. And one of them is Rav Eliyahu Tovger. It could be he's the, the Moak behind the whole thing. And I've spoken to him a few times. He seems very straight and very honest. And, but he says some strange things. I just want to say one thing. You could find it in this country. The question, how does it come up every 70 years? The, the dog uh, how does it come up now I haven't seen any good answers for it but he says like this Rav Tovker by the way his father-in-law is a friend of mine he lives mamash across the street from me uh, Rav Tovker now he says like this 170, 70 years 70 shows his love Tovker could be 7 uh, 7 years and it could be every 7 months also ok I hear uh, uh, and so what does it mean? Ah, so every seven months, and what does it mean it comes up? The murex never comes up, uh, unlike the, the cuttlefish, the fish of the red zinner, it comes up, so they don't have food, whatever reason is, you'll ask your local biologist uh, when they come up and why they come up. Sometimes you see whales coming up on the, on the land here. They do come up uh, here, here in Earth's Israel. I saw them not long ago. Sharks come up. Uh, I see it in the papers a little bit uh, here in Eretz Yisrael. Ah, so what does it mean, come up? So Rav Targa says it means we go down and bring them up. That's what it means, come up every 70 years. I haven't seen any other one. Please let me know. I'll write it out. Again, I want to say I'm speaking this because I don't have a computer. I'm just, all I have is an ancient iPhone, and it's very hard for me to type. So I'm saying these things even though I mamash uh, don't like so much to do this. Now, another great person who I know 40 years, who's very, very bad to is Rav Brand, Rav Yitzhak Brand. I met him maybe 39, 40 years ago. I used to yell at him, I used to say, but making us at Breslau Gadol. 
in, in Meisharim, and they were at that point everywhere in different shuls in Yerushalayim, Zichron Moshe, Shtiblach, Breslov. They were coming out amazing kuntrasim on all sorts of things. One mimer was so brilliant. Uh, it was about the Mashiach. Is the Mashiach from is the Mashiach from parrots or Zerach? We all know it's from parrots, but he said this is a mistake of Chabad. I don't want to offend any Chabad Nikim, and maybe if somebody could, uh, I spoke to him about it uh, not long ago. Ah, oh, I'm going to tell you what he said. So I was reading a mimer. Now I look for it again, by the way, a mimer from a brand on Tachelis. He must have 20 mimer in there, a lot of mimer. I didn't go read it again, but I'll tell you what I saw there. He brought, it is brought in Piloni, Pilonis, her elder, a Greek biologist. It could be it's not even translated into English, all of it. It could be you have to go to Greek. That he says an amazing thing, which would be a strong proof to the Chilazon, that they says from the Murex, they make two colors, two dyes, the Argamon and the Techelis, which is amazing. And he, uh, that's what my brand said. So I, I called him up. Uh, uh, where is this? Where is this? So he says he didn't see it. Could be it wasn't printed in English. Uh, but he saw it. I don't, I'm not going to mention the other person. Now he saw it in a certain book on Techelis. And through the help of Dr. Strum, I got the phone number of this uh, Mahaber that wrote a book on Techelis. And he quotes this Polinus elder. I called him up. Where is it? So he said, I believe the details, I'm uh, pretty close, I don't know if I remember all the details. It hasn't been translated yet. Now, but Kitra, I have a friend who's written my morning, Rav David Shapiro, Shiabari. Uh, he's printed a, two or three, four my morning on, on Techelis in the Carlin Torah Journal. It comes out three, four times a year. Everybody that goes to a shul in Yerushalayim, they see it. It's a brown cover a little bit, a beige cover. And he writes for them. He uh, he's, uh, works on ancient manuscripts for Machon Yerushalayim. He used to work with other people. He was a freelance. He's a very talented person of manuscripts. Why well, one second here. He knows Greek. So I got the kids. I called up uh, this rabbi that put out the book. He didn't want to send me the book in a PDF form, so that's why I'm not quoting it, I'm not, I didn't see it inside. And he told me a Makor where to look, I told it to my friend Rav David Shapiro, and he says it's complete, he doesn't know how to read. He doesn't, it's a complete mistake, Polinus Elder never says such a thing. Now this is a, uh, it's also, it's a, I talked about people that weren't so accurate, we'll, we'll use Lushen Naki, they weren't so accurate, somebody attacked me, I didn't use such Lushen Naki to describe one of these people that, well, let's say, made mistakes. Or maybe it was Magali Panim I was attacked on um, the comments here. They're still available, but I, before the first one I said, I'm not going to erase comments like uh, like I claim that the rabbi from Lakewood did. So some people said it couldn't have been, it was an accident. Uh, lawyer did. It, was, it seemed a dishonest thing. Now, everybody should get the mimer that wants to know about the chalice. And go through the 21 Simon they're given here. I'll tell you a very interesting thing. A lot of my friends are into, I have a, a lot of my friends, a couple of friends are very into Tivo news and health food and homeopathy. They're not, nobody knows homeopathy. They say in homeopathy, oh, one of the things here, let's look on the list. Uh, it's right in front of me. Oh, wait, wait, Is that it's a Rafua. It's a Gamora and a Veda Zora. I can't find it at the moment in the list. It's a Rafua for hemorrhoids, the blood of the chilozon for the chilos. And even today, the cuttlefish is used as uh, they take it from the hemorrhoid, the, uh, the homeopathic people use it. It's a side thing. So I'm leaving it at this. And uh, on Techelis, I think I hope I answered the question. Let me just look at the comments here again. One second. Okay, they are. Uh, it was attacked pretty much personally. I'm leaving them on. But I'll say, like Rav Mir Kahana, Shem Yom Kom Domo, that he says, I don't care what you say about me, just spell my name right. So, I, I mean, I would like compliments, but. But I'm, okay, now I just want to put in one word. How do they say? Since you have the chauffeur, you can blow, like they told the fellow. 
uh, the, the mosque guild that wanted to blow on Rosh Hashanah. He said, you can blow on Yom Kippur, you can keep blowing. And was going to take away from you. Now, I saw an amazing thing I just want to say now. On the Chasichas Chashavua from Chabad, the last page, is something I've heard about. Mama and Sama child is in the, the yellow Pella that he forgot, he knew the whole Torah. They would say a Pasuk, he was four years old at the time, let's see, he was five years old at the time, five, six years old at the time. Brings. I looked up some of his details, they brought in a sheet there. His name is Yisrael Moshe Mandel. And he was a yellow Pella. They would say a line of Gamor, he would complete it. And they took him to the Ger Reb, the Belzer Rebbe at the time, and there's different gears is what happened to Sikha Shavu didn't bring it. Some said Tovelim, take him to a mikvah that's possible, and Tovelim a mikvah that's possible, and he'll become a normal boy. The other gears is what happened. The Moloch, obviously, you know, when the child is born, they give him a putch on the mouth, and he forgets all the learning he was doing in his uh, Bet Nemo. So they had this article, but I just want to add a couple of things on it. There's a certain rabbi in our neighborhood that sometimes he would do, and for his drasha, he would read from the No Meli Melech, which is a very holy safer. And why? Because he says, you know, the Asa, he, he knew Gomorrahs, and he knew Rishonim, and he knew everything. So somebody came, and they started reading the No Meli Melech, a few lines, and the Yelad Pella, he would go the next few lines. So Shema Mina, the, they learned the No Meli Melech in Shemayim. Now, I heard from the Nechet of, I was very close, Bismano, Bismani, Bismano, uh, to uh, Rav Velvel Cheshen, who was a great Sadiq, and I'm still very close to his family. And they, so he came also, he must have been 1954, he must have been about 42, 43, forget exactly, a young guy, a very Chashuv Avrech, from the Cheshen family, as a, a kid, sir. And, uh, and he he took out Lakuti Moran and Lakuti Alachas and started reading it to the boy, the Wunderkind. And he can continue it. Shma Mina, they learned Lakuti Moran by Rabbi Nachman and Lakuti Alachas by Shamayim. Okay, I'll leave it at this and please leave comments if I made any mistakes. Really, I, this I'm saying, I'm not 100% sure, but I've never seen these rabbis, Rabbi Belsky, Rabbi. Uh, Schechter never talk about the proofs. It's by them. It's a given. This techelis, this uh, murex is techelis, but a proof of it. Again, the only proofs I see, uh, my morim that go into. Let's understand who is techelis. Are from Rav Reisman and a poskim. I mean, uh, somebody wrote a whole book on it. They wrote a whole books on this. But of a poskim, Rav Rav. Uh, Sternbach, Rav Reisman, and Rav Asher Weiss, who is very short and very simple, and is recommended everybody. And the Rav Weiss, I found a clip of him somewhere. It's on this channel. It's a 14-minute clip, but really after 10 minutes, he says, he goes into a bit of a drasha, uh, and you could hear what he has to say. Very recommended. And Basiros Toivos, Lakola Yudim, Koltov.